Could you guess? So um, I'm still Rachel Axe. So I completely sympathize with the with the fact that this has hurt supporting membership income for conventions, and you know we're crying about we're broke. But I also want to say that if you cut off the the second year, you're you're going to have a lot of actual people who want to participate crying that they're broke because. Um, my main interest is seeing that the Hugo Awards are accessible to as many fans as possible, and not all fans are necessarily even going to be able to afford a supporting membership. There were years where I couldn't afford a supporting membership when I was a graduate student. So if, if, if you can give people more bang for their, their buck, so to speak, you are going to get more participation, and the more participation we have, the more robust the awards are going to be. So I think, you know, two years... Uh, Two years are better than one year. Thanks. Is there another speech in favor? Ms. Secor. Uh, chair, yes. uh, as a Sergeant of Arms, may I make a quick note? Yes. Um, I'm going to be direct. I'm hearing uh, commentary from the audience when some people stand up to make a motion or something that they are displeased with that. Please stop. If I can hear you, then you know that's an issue, and it's, it's discouraging to people who are trying to participate here. Thank you. I would like to point out that this is a notion about who gets to nominate. Right now, we are allowing three years worth of people to nominate, but only one year's worth of people to vote. So what we're actually doing is we are expanding the voting pool to people who would otherwise only have been nominators by saying to them, hey, if you care enough to nominate, you probably care enough to vote also. You'd have to buy a supporting membership to do that anyway. So I don't think that this necessarily has a huge impact on participation because what it does is it flips nominators into voters and that is what actually impacts the awards. Is there a speech against the motion? He got you, no, you. you go ahead. That did. Yeah, so my, my name is Dave Wallace, um, and I, I oppose this. Last year was my first Worldcon, and I didn't join until after the nominations came out. Now, admittedly, you know, it was in response to what was going on with the puppies and everything, but um, recognizing that if this passes, you only get, you, you don't get the whole membership of the current Worldcon. You only get those who joined before, be it January 31st or December 31st, the people who are thinking ahead. Um, it also means that if people are trying to game the system, they can organize themselves and all join before the deadline, and other people who may be opposed to that may not have gotten their act together or gotten the word that something's going on and not be uh, there. Whereas, again, if you have the two-year system, which is, I think, what we're uh, heading for, um, the population of the previous Worldcon is still there as a large body of people who presumably have opinions and are willing to uh, nominate. And I, I, I like the idea of two years. I, I think getting rid of the third year is fine, but um, I, I would like to keep it the way it is because I think it does mean that there's a representative pool there available to nominate. Thank you. Mr. Buff, for, for what purpose does the member rise? Okay. Is, do you have a parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Quinn? You have to recognize this. Yeah. So I, I, I recognize Mr. Buff. Do you, Ms. Kovar, do you have a parliamentary inquiry? I can't this. Okay. Warren Buff. Uh, I know, I, I did hear the argument that, you know, it would only include those people who join early. However, as the minority of people in this room who've written a Worldcon budget know, getting people to join early does very good things for our decision-making ability. We can have a better Worldcon if we encourage people to join early. Is there a, for, for, for what purpose is memorized? She has been, yeah. I, Could you state your name? Oh, my name is Adrian Foster, 
and um, I do respect uh, the maker's motion on this. I could see where it's coming from, but I can also see it having a domino effect because the whole reason we started the two-year process was because of that cutout off date. And if we take take that the the previous year's um, nominators off it, then then we should remove the cutoff date as well. So um, anyway, that that's my my feeling on the matter. I think it's a logistical issue too. Mr. Olson, for what purpose? This point of inquiry. How much debate time do we have on this process? It gets the ten minutes that would. Thirty seconds against. Or did you mean it is left? There's 30 seconds against, um, two and a half minutes for. Mr. Kowalczyk, for what purpose does the member rise? There are, I believe there are members wishing to speak who have not spoken yet. Ms. Rudolph, are you speaking in favor? She has 30 seconds. No, she has two and a half minutes. No. We acknowledge that, and I think that this um, amendment acknowledges that the nomination process is broken in the Hugo Awards. Can you speak and out into the microphone? Okay. Hold the microphone. You can take it off there. We acknowledge that the nomination process of the Hugo Awards has some serious deficits, and we think that this will help focus um, the nominations on the people who have the most, um, th that care the most about the outcome of the Hugos. Keep in mind that this only impacts nominations, not voting. Voting has always been the current year members. The nominations, um, having to extend them to the prior and, past, and, and future year um, is a huge, impact on the administration of the awards of, of the nomination process. Um, I think that a $40 or sometimes $50 supporting membership fee is an extremely low barrier to entry. People do not have to have attending memberships in order to nominate. They would have to have supporting memberships, which is that 40 perhaps 50 maybe $35 fee. Um, and you get benefits from that fee, and some of those benefits are the ability to nominate and vote on the Hugos. If you're invested in this process, you are willing to make the sacrifice to not buy the two hardcover books or maybe one hardcover and one paperback that that $40 would have gotten for you. And it will also discourage people who are not invested in the process from coming back year after year in order to go through the process and have to pay to destroy something that they do not appreciate. Thank you. Well, those people still kind of speak, so. I have to have follow-up. What? I have to have follow-up tomorrow after all. I, I, for what? Can you? Um, speech, okay. There is, third. The guy is speaking. There, there, he is. There's 30 seconds both for and against, roughly. Are the people standing the only people who would like to continue to speak to this motion, or are there others who would like to speak? All right. Um, Ms. Hayes, do you want to speak against, since you've been standing? Lisa Hayes, I was going to speak in favor of this motion, but the gentleman over here, argument swayed me greatly. I believe that any member who became a member this year, a few hours ago, or the first day of the convention, should get something for that membership, and I would like to see the previous year continue to be put in the pool, the pool of people who can nominate. Is there a speech in favor of the motion? Mr. Shepard? I'm philosophically with 